Buen Camino, Buenos Dias, Bonjour, uh, and uh, we're all part of the Camino family, as John Brierly said. He's so good, glad to see everybody from the Camino family, so welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to have a fun day today. Today is the open house, and our first um, Zoom meeting uh, this morning with everyone, our gathering, will feature John Brierly, but first we'd like to welcome uh, Steve Litch, who is our chairman and uh, our leader of the American Pilgrims Board of uh, Directors. And Steve, uh, could you tell us just a, a, a very briefly about the mission of the American Pilgrims and uh, your uh, uh, wishes for today? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, thanks, Tom. And thanks to you and the whole membership team for these monthly uh, Zoom gatherings that we have. And today is a very special one with just a, a full plate of uh, delicacies and, and joys. Uh, the mission of American Pilgrims on the Camino is to foster the enduring tradition of the Camino. And we do that in three ways, by supporting the, its infrastructure, gathering pilgrims together, and by providing information and encouragement to past and future pilgrims. We support the infrastructure by training hospitaleros and providing welcoming volunteers at the Ribadiso Albergue, by making grants through local organizations along the Camino. This year, we made $78,000 worth of grants to maintain and improve Donativo albergues, to develop trails, and to support those in Spain who work to enhance the pilgrim's experience. We gather pilgrims through our local chapters. There are almost 60 around the country. And through our gathering uh, every year, which is coming up April 14th through 16th at Lake Tahoe in Nevada, registration will open in January. And we provide information through our quarterly uh, e online publication, La Concha, our online communities, including Facebook, which has over 20,000 members, our website, which has links to resources and these national events. So um, the hope for today, the expectation is that we're gonna inspire all who seek the spirit of the Camino to connect with a global community of pilgrims. Oh, excellent, Steve. You did, you did an inspirational, outstanding job of that. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Well, let's get started this morning. As you know, we all, when we've all gone either to San Juan or, or Pamplona, we've all been so excited to get started. And uh, so let's get started this morning. And we welcome John Brierly. And uh, John, of course, is the author of the, the, the main Camino guidebook to the Caminos. Uh, and John has been such an inspiration um, to worldwide pilgrims all over for for decades now. And um, uh, John, uh, you guided uh, people on the Camino for the infrastructure and the paths, but you've also guided us in the spiritual way of, of doing a Camino for that Camino to make a difference in our lives. Uh, may I just start off with one question and then you can take it on your own, but how has the Camino transformed positively the life of John Brierley. Oh, wow. Well, no, um, that's, it completely changed my life. I mean, it, it uh, um, before I discovered the Camino, I was a, a heavily in inverted commas, an important businessman in Dublin and the property world, I was a surveyor, um, living an utterly materialistic life. Um, and, uh, you know, I stumbled on the Camino um, by mistake, didn't know where I was, uh, went off with my family because I was on a sort of a, a mid-career break. Um, and I, what I realized was it was actually, you know, my family all thought it was, uh, 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 and friends and peers thought it was a breakdown, but actually it was a breakthrough uh, into um, another reality. Um, and the Camino helped me to, deepen and understand uh, that aspect of myself, which I was unaware of before that. So I owe, you know, a complete reorientation of my life um, to the Camino. And I believe it to be an incredibly powerful transformative agent in the world today when transformation uh, uh, is so much required. That is the transformation of human consciousness because 
Um, you know, in the words of Einstein, you know, we can't solve the problem with the same mindset that gave problem to rise to the problem in the first place. You know, when all is said and done, we need a new consciousness. Well, then that arises. Well, how do you get a new consciousness? Well, you know, it is my view that we get a new consciousness by letting go the old consciousness. So there's a, an aspect of dying, uh, which is important in the pilgrimage journey. We have to let go the old, the old ways, the old ideas, some of the old belief systems in order for something new to arise. So I owe the Camino um, a, a complete change and uh, in my own life. And, and uh, I'm eternally grateful for that. And I see that change happening in a lot of other people's lives as well. So John, if you had one bit of advice to give to everyone, I mean, you've given so much helpful advice that's guided us on the ways to the Camino. What would that advice be uh, to make it a meaningful pilgrimage for everyone? Okay, well, I would say um, spend at least the same amount of time on inner preparation as out of preparation. So usually when we're taking time out to go on a pilgrimage, uh, you know, if it's if, if you're starting in, you know, it, it could be three, four, five weeks. If you start in Budapest, you'd need three months. So take time before, um, and it's always difficult because we're always usually at the height of a business trying to close our affairs to allow us to go off to take time out. Um, but do, I would really heavily recommend it, take time to really ask some um, questions. Why, why am I going? You know, what, what, what am I trying to achieve out of this? Um, you know, on, a, on an inner level, and, and indeed on an outer level, we might be wanting to lose weight. But um, that's only one aspect of the pilgrimage. We might be wanting to discover the wines of France or Spain or discover the beautiful landscape that we walk through. But it's really important also, I believe, uh, to really, if we wanted to be a, become a pilgrimage, we have to take time to prepare inner questions, you know, those deep inner existential questions. Um, and how we do that is up to us. There's many wonderful websites we can do it, but take time, you know, which we often don't allow ourselves to do, just to reflect in the quiet, why am I doing this? What do I hope to achieve out of this on an inner level, on a transformational level? Um, and allow some ideas to bubble to the surface. I do, a, a, in, in all the guidebooks, there's a questionnaire there, which is a prompts people to, you know, have an idea of what, you know, some ideas to reflect um, on, on those inner uh, promptings that we hopefully we will get. Because after all, if we're really looking for change in our lives, um, um, it will really only come when we allow time for the inner changes to happen. I mean, I spent many years at a place called the Fintorn Foundation that sort of, you know, had different programs. And it was always fascinating how, um, you know, after, uh, you know, people would rush home after a program. People tend to rush home after the Camino, you know, they've got a flight to catch or whatever, or whatnot. And if we don't allow time either at the end of the Camino, join the Camino, and when we get home, to allow the insights that we got, um, we forget them. You know, six months later, or I, 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 I can't remember. Well, that's an awful pity, because that transformation, those insights that come, the inspiration that comes, the hints, the changes, uh, we need to take them seriously and allow uh, uh, time to to really let them percolate and become part of of the new who we are, the new rea a new reality, and of course I, I believe that is one of the great gifts of the um, various associations around the world. Um, you know, you, uh, the uh, American Pilgrims on the Camino is one such wonderful thing. You've got all these chapters all around America where people can, <clears throat> if you like, support each other to remember, to recall, to come together, uh, to remind us uh, um, of the insights that we got, and also to give us the courage to follow the new directions. Often we, you know, a new idea comes up, yes, I need to do that, yes, I need to change this, and then we get back home, and then there's that awful phrase that comes from when we get back home, oh, welcome back to the real world. 
you know, and then all the sort of pressure to fall back into consensus reality. Consensus reality is absolute share madness. Look at what consensus reality looks like at the moment in the world. Who on earth could want to hang on to that consensus? We have to let it go and find a, a new consciousness. So that would be my, my um, suggestion, recommendation for people going out on the Camino, really find an inner purpose for going out and hold on to it, write it down, recall it, remember it, um, and let it deepen because uh, it will deepen as we, as we play with the ideas that, that we, 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 we go with. It's not static, it's not cast in stone, it evolves. Um, let it evolve into the new you. You know, John, you've been such an inspiration to us over these years of your guidebooks. Um, you recently emailed me uh, of your, I believe you took two Caminos here in 2022. And how have the Caminos changed here now in 2022? And do you wish to share anything about your personal journeys and what you got out of the Caminos this past year? Well, yes, I mean, I've been walking the Caminos now for a quarter of a century and um, uh, and they've become my life. Uh, um, not only the Caminos in terms of the physical walk that we do, but my life is a Camino. I really believe that profoundly. What else is it? It's a spiritual journey. It's a journey of awakening. It, 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 I'm, I'm on it now talking to you. I'll be on it when I'm go down and talk to my grandchild who I heard a moment coming into the house, hope she doesn't come into this room. She's usually very loud, but I, it'll be part of the journey. You know, whatever happens, I'm on the Camino. And knowing that I can never not be on the Camino. Um, and I think what you're referring to is something that I shared with you well, and I'm very happy to share it with a, with a, with a wider audience. But um, essentially I was diagnosed with um, uh, three, forms of cancer. Um, and last um, April, I was told that um, I had only a few months to, to live. And so I was fine with that. The journey always comes to an end. I've had a good innings. Um, but I didn't really believe the oncologists and um, because I believe that to a large extent, I make my own, my own weather and, and my own health. So I decided I was going to walk the Caminos. Um, and I unhitched from all the um, uh, chemotherapy and various treatments because they weren't working for me anyway and they're making me rather sick and I said I'm off to walk the Caminos and uh, they were all rather fascinated by that I said oh how lovely um, weren't expecting to see me back um, and you know as I walked I found incredible healing and um, you know recently uh, you know my oncologist said well I can't we can't understand your you're an enigma, they say. We can't, you don't, we don't understand it. But what they don't understand is the healing power of, uh, of nature, um, of our own intention, of our own mindset. And, um, you know, I will keep walking the Caminos. I, I, will, I will die in harness. What a wonderful, I mean, what else would I do? I don't want to be plugged into um, uh, treatments if, if I don't need it. My health has come back. I've never felt stronger. Um, and uh, when I arrived in, uh, having walked from Lisbon through to um, uh, to Santiago, my family joined me there to walk out to um, to Finisterre for a sort of a, a final goodbye for granddad and dad. And it was wonderful. The whole grandchildren, we all went out to Finisterre and had a wonderful sort of celebration there as we got used to the idea of death and dying as, as part of, you know, the life cycle. So I've said my goodbyes and, um, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm going to be here for another 10 or 20 years. I don't know, but right now, <laughs> I do believe that a large part of my healing, uh, I can put it down to nothing else other than being in God's fresh air, walking um, an overtly spiritual route, uh, meeting with other um, pilgrims, all asking the deep, big existential questions of why are we here, where are we going, what's it all about? I feel so alive and so privileged to be living at this time. <clears throat> um, now, I wouldn't like to be starting again, I, I tell you, I mean, my heavens gracious me, that the, the future that uh, the younger generations face, um, the sort of the legacy that we're leaving behind is, is uh, 
is pretty dire in many in many ways. Um, but um, I do believe that the Caminos um, has an incredible power of healing. But I referred now here just a moment ago to physical healing. But actually, the real healing I believe is in the mind, is in the consciousness. That's where the real healing comes. I mean, the body. We have to drop these bodies at some stage, <clears throat> and I do believe that the Caminos is um, a very powerful uh, uh, vehicle to understand and to cope with and understand the dying process. Um, you know, we have these bodies, they're very uh, fickle and frail, and they're very impermanent, and at some stage we have to drop our physical bodies, but that doesn't mean to say that, uh, uh, that, that life doesn't go on. You know, there's an eternal life and there's a physical life, um, and there's a there's a physical Camino and there's a Camino that goes way beyond uh, this uh, realm that we're in into the subtle realm. So, um, you know, that's bringing the subject, you know, rather deeper than maybe that, um, that than I had imagined or intended, but um, it's all part of a, a wonderful tapestry of living and, and of life. And, um, uh, you know, there's so many of the great wisdom teachings tell us that we can't live fully and until we've embraced the understanding that we these physical frames need to pass on and need to die and it's my belief um, that part of the efficacy and the power of the caminos is to learn how to die to our old belief systems that's so necessary i believe uh, we have to die to our old self this persona that we've built up this image this you know this famous guidebook writer, this written lots of books, all this sort of drama, this, this, uh, this uh, that we've built up as to who we are, but we're much more than what we present, um, you know, on the screen here in front of us. We're much deeper than that. You know, we come, you know, we, the big deep existential, who am I? That's the classic pilgrim question. Who am I? That is, who am I beyond this physical frame, beyond this persona, beyond the guidebook writer, beyond the, the grandfather and the father, beyond the son whose parents have gone? Who am I? Really, who am I? And um, that's a wonderful question to ask. And indeed, in, in some traditions, um, it's suggested that uh, in some of the wisdom traditions, even in the Western wisdom tradition, it's suggested that that question should never be answered. It's not meant to be answered. It's meant to dissolve the questioner. When the ego as the questioner is let go, the truth of who we are will reveal itself. Now, I love that concept because so long as I am attached to who I am in this physical frame and um, with my identity and so on and so forth, so long as I hold on to that, <clears throat> um, the truth of who I am beyond this could never emerge. And uh, we've sort of fallen rather like narcissists, we've rather fallen in love with this image of ourselves and our bodies. And so we collectively in the world, generally speaking, that's who we think we are. But that's a very limited view of our identity, um, in my view, and I believe the Camino is one of the vehicles we have simply because, not simply, but because we, it requires us to walk, you can't walk from the Saint Jean to Santiago in less than a five or six weeks or something. You know, they all take this time <clears throat> and where we can get beyond the image of who we are and open up to something much bigger. Um, much more exciting, you know, we open, start to open up to, to divinity, to the divine. I mean, where do we come from? Um, uh, you know, and, and then when we're together, we can feed off each other and ask these questions. And that's, again, one of the huge, powerful aspects of the Camino. Everybody on the Camino, I, we can talk like this on day one on the Camino. And wherever you are on the Camino, not only do we have permission to talk deeply like this, I believe it's actually our duty. 
yes, we need to talk about the weather because we need to know whether we've got to get a poncho out in case of the shower coming or something like that. But really why we're on the Camino is to ask each other these deep existential questions. I believe that to be, to be so. And that's why I believe the Caminos are so incredibly powerful um, because you know, everyone's chewing and mulling over these questions. Um, um, or are, you know, in the, the, it, it, somewhere in, in, the, in the background, those questions are there bubbling the surface and we can encourage each other to bring them to the forefront. Um, and, and in that we, you know, start to discover um, a, a much bigger self than, you know, self-discovery. What is the Camino? Somebody asked me, what, what's the Camino? I would say it's a journey of self-discovery. That is a discovery of a self that we've forgotten, who, that we forgot about. You know, we've fallen into identifying with the small self, the body self, the persona. But beyond that is this enormous self with a capital S. There's a lovely quote from Thomas Merton. Um, uh, I, it, it's in one, some of the, I will put it in one of the guidebooks. And I just put on, what could we gain by traveling to the moon if we are not able to cross the abyss that separates us from ourselves? This is the most important of all voyages of discovery. And without it, all the rest are not only useless, but disastrous. That's Thomas Merton. Now, if, you know, I like to read that regularly. You know, it's fascinating. It's, he's asking us to go so deep. Um, uh, you know, I, I just love, I just, I, I love a lot of his writing, but that, that, that one really catches my imagination because it talks about a journey and a journey of discovery and of self-discovery. And that's what the Camino is. What else is it? <laughs> um, you know, it's not a hike through Spain. Oh yes, it's a hike through Spain. True, but that's not its true purpose. Yes, we discover a beautiful landscape. Yes, we discover beautiful people and uh, the new culture and beautiful wines and food and whatever and folklore and culture. But primarily, it's that uh, it's that journey of self-discovery, and um, and that's I believe why the Camino uh, is, is becoming so is so popular. Um, now, I think one of the, the danger, I'll flag a little red flag here, and, and you stop me, Tom, because I'm originally from Ireland, as you know, and, and I, can, you, I could be here till after midnight, uh, um, and, and I know you've other things to do, so you, you tell me, what, you flag me when I stop, but I, I, um, uh, in fact, I'll stop now, because we, I would love to get into questions and, uh, and sort of answers, because that's where, in a way, the real meat to me is because that then we're, we're, we're going to places where people want to discuss and talk. Okay, John. John, first I gotta say that the, these last few moments of you sharing what you just shared after reading probably dozens and dozens of books about the Camino and talking to hundreds of people on the Camino about the Camino, these past few moments with you have been the most inspirational. It is just really positive. Uh, we are admire that and appreciate that so very, very much. Very touching, very touching. And I know people in the chat have been saying that too. Um, so let's open it up right now. Uh, as you said, this is a live um, Zoom right now. So there are uh, a few hundred uh, American Pilgrims on the Camino on live. And uh, if uh, maybe one at a time can ask a question, um, let's do that. Um, unmute yourself and try to be respectful of somebody else is talking. It looks like Jojo is showing up and Jojo, you've got a question. Hi, Mr. Riley. Thank you so much for your service on the Camino and to humanity. It's so great to hear you. Very wonderful. And thanks for everyone hosting. I'm very, um, my, the most important part for me of the Camino is the spiritual part. 
I think everything else is extra bonus. And I wonder how does meditation play in your preparation for the Camino? And also how does spirit speak to you both on the Camino and well, uh, during the real Camino, which is life, you know, the everyday, the everyday art of living and loving. Thank you. Hmm. Well, um, to answer your question, Giorgio, I would say to you that um, the Western mind uh, tends to find meditation very difficult. I mean, everyone says that, you know, it, 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 you, our lives are so busy and hectic. However, um, uh, it's often said, and people have often said it to me, <clears throat> that they fall naturally into meditation through walking. Walking, walking creates a very natural meditation uh, sort of ambience, uh, particularly if you're walking through what I call the landscape temple. You're walking through nature, you're walking through trees on paths. Um, that in, in and of itself creates a meditation. And most people that I speak to who, who don't have a, a regular meditation practice or haven't been brought up in a, in a, in a Buddhist tradition or in a meditation tradition, um, tend to say to me that they discovered it by walking in nature. Um, and I think that's true, particularly when we take ourselves out of a familiar environment, you know, our home life or whatever not, we place ourselves in an unfamiliar environment you know, on one of the Caminos, and we start to walk that, something naturally happens that becomes meditation. Um, that is meditation. And the secret then is to try, if in my understanding and in, in my experience, is to try and bring that back with us into our, you know, normal life back home. Because if we can only find that sense of peace or meaningfulness or depth, when we're walking the Camino, well, then it's, it's really of no purpose because, you know, we don't, unless you're, unless you're like me, where I spend half my life on the Camino, you know, maybe you hit the Camino for a week or two, uh, hopefully a bit more than that, but a month, once every five years or something. You, you know, we have to learn how to bring that back home uh, with us. Um, and to make our lives a Camino. And that's always, it's always much easier, you know, to fall into a meditation when you're in a lovely church and somebody's lit candles and maybe chanting Teze or, you know, or, or chanting or something like that. Then it's very easy to fall into some sort of a, a meditative state, uh, just like, you know, walking the Caminos and so on. But we have to bring that back into our ordinary everyday lives. And, you know, when I lose it, which I do regularly, and, you know, and I spiral off, my wife says, oh, where's John the Camino gone to? And that's a lovely reminder to me because it brings me back. When I'm on the Camino, I naturally fall into a sort of a quiet meditative place. Um, I'm more open. I've got an open heart and open mind. Um, and then when I come back home, you know, I, as most of us do, we, you know, there are times when we lose it, but we need to remind ourselves of it. And that is another, I think, gift of pilgrims when we come back home and another service that, uh, you know, the Association of American Pilgrims um, can give to people is by, you know, these, uh, what we're doing now, reminding each other to be kind to each other, reminding each other of, of you know, um, of, of, of why we walk the Camino in the first place and how to try and bring back the insights that we learned and the quiet and the meditation back into our lives. So um, I hope that's answered that question from Jojo. Okay, I see another question from Lynn. Lynn, do you wish to ask John a question? Uh, I wanna thank you for your insights and your inspiration. You. I always read your physical and spiritual Camino uh, sections for every for every single stage, and I find them amazing. But um, your your statement of my life is a Camino, I just sends chills through my body because that's what I that's what I feel, and that's how I 
um, I want to continue to live my life. But what I want to ask is where are the yellow arrows in my life? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I would like to find those yellow arrows to point me sometimes in the right direction. <laughs> Well, perhaps, Lynn, that, you know, refers back to the previous question, too, you know, is to go to that quiet place. Um, you know, we, 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 each of us, I believe, uh, um, uh, you know, it's not for me to say we, we've all got different belief systems, but absolutely, I believe that we all have access to inner wisdom to a wise being, you know, whether that's an aspect of ourselves or whatever, whatnot, whether we believe in angels or guides or helpers. I absolutely know and experience in my own life that when I take time to ask for help, it's always there. It's always there. I've never ever asked for help or for direction ever that I haven't received direction and an answer, providing, providing I listen. And I think that's the, a, a big key to this. You know, there's a part of me, the ego part of me, the small part of me that jumps in and says, oh, this is the way you're good to go. You know, the, the false guide. Um, and there's lots of false arrows. So we need to watch for those. But we'll, I think we always know when we get that direction and that voice, because it's so loving, it's so affirming, it's so kind, it's so gentle, and it feels so right. There's a resonance with it that comes with it. Yes, yes, that's the direction. And I think the key to that is to is to listen. Now, you know, to really listen. To listen, there's a lovely expression, I don't know where, where it came from, to listen from behind the heart you know, to really, really listen. And then I think when we're, when we're in that, and that's related, I think, to being calm and being in a meditative place um, and open to answers and open to directions, the yellow arrow, in fact, how many times have we all, you know, got lost on the Camino, particularly, you know, once it aren't the Camino Francaise where there's, it, it, there's just so many arrows, but some of the more remote, uh, Caminos where you would think, oh my heavens, you know, two, I've been an hour now without an arrow, where's, oh, but heavens gracious me, I've lost, I've got off track, and then the yellow arrow pops up, you know, <laughs> the, the, the arrow is always there somewhere, and even, and even being lost is, can be a very powerful place to be, because to some extent, we're all lost, and we have to admit we're lost before we can find new direction, if we all, if we all think that we know where we're going there's no hope <laughs> because look at the world we, 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 we at some stage we have to acknowledge that we've been following some wrong arrows and um, and to let go the old value systems the old judgments the old uh, you know ways that that things were to let them go so that the new the fresh arrow can pop into place so i think the big answer for me to that question is the answer is always there provided we listen we have to listen so so if anybody does have a question if you would um go to uh raising your hand there's an electronic uh, way of raising your hand um on the on the zoom um and i see sandy has raised her hand and if you would please ask your question sure um i've walked the Camino twice. The first time I did it by myself. Well, we're never really alone. The second time I walked with my brother and I was adopted. He's my biological brother. We live 2000 miles apart, but we've been reunited 27 years. We chose to do this together. And I was so excited. I thought of it as more of a spiritual time. He clearly thought of it as a competition. He is going to walk every inch of that Camino. So my question is, when we decide we're going to walk with someone else, do you have a suggestion for how we can best discuss our intentions? And I'm not saying we needed to have the same intention, but I think we needed language to be clearer about what we saw in the experience or what we expected to see. Great, Sandy. Well, you know, wonderful. We, 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 we've all experienced this. Um, 
and you know, the, 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 there's many answers, and that that they, they, they often contradict, in my view, contradict themselves. So um, one of the things is to again spend some time reflecting on those questions. You know, those questionnaires. You know, why am I doing this? What do I hope to get out of it? A, a lot. Most most of us don't make that time. But that would be very very useful, and then to discuss if you're working with somebody else, um, to you know this is what I'm you know I'm aiming to do. You know, is I um, I want to find that place in me that touches God. You know, why are you walking it? Well, because I want to achieve it in see if I can do it in under 21 days, and then you can say, well, you know, maybe maybe these don't match so well, um, or and then another side could say, well, yes, that's a wonderful way to walk because now every day you're going to be faced with a judgment uh, that somebody's walking it for the wrong reason um, or for a competitive reason or that isn't your reason and can you can you live with that i don't think that i could but i mean it, there's clearly a lesson involved in that as well um uh, and then the 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 other i mean i um the previous question was, you know, looking for for, answer, for answers. Um, the first Camino I did, I walked it with a very competitive uh, uh, person, um, just like you. Uh, this guy, I would, went for a very deep in a, a transformational. Uh, I went for a very, with a very high purpose in mind. Um, and he had a competitive. He was always very competitive, and. Um, I allowed him to pull me on, um, and to the extent that when I reached Logroño in seven, in six days or five days, I was ridiculous about that. My, I, I had developed shin splints, and the doctors there said oh, you'll have to go home. Your your commune is over, and they could see my visible distress. And then they said, well, look, stay with us for a week, and we'll see whether we can um, you know, stabilize this and we'll assess it as we go along, we'll assess it at the end of the week and see whether you can go on very differently. You'll have to go very slowly. You'll have to get you know, jettison some of your stuff and walk very lightly. And so I, you know, I had to go to my friend and say, you know, I'm sorry, I be, it, it, this has happened. And um, so he went on. Now, you know, you can talk about guides, helpers. I mean, I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that I was being looked after and he was being looked after. And I went on and had a very profound experience, so much so that, you know, I had this sort of, in a sense, an, an altered state uh, where I was told I was going to be writing guidebooks. I mean, that made no sense to me at the time, but it was a very deep pilgrimage for me. And I, I know, absolutely know that I could not have achieved um, that understanding or that new direction in my life had I continued with him. Um, but I had no intention of leaving him. Um, but it happened. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there's many different ways to answer that question. Um, uh, I've answered it from my perspective, uh, my own experience. Um, and, you know, I tend to, we have to be very careful about making a judgment of anybody else's Camino. Every Camino is valid and everybody has a reason to walk the way they do, whether it's to, do it in 21 days or do it to find God or whatever. So we absolutely can't make a judgment. And I, I, you know, I used to, but I would never make a judgment again because of the number of things that happened to me. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly uh, the, the deeper experiences tend to come um, if we walk on our own. You know, if, you know, if we walk with our you know, a, 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 um, a partner or something like that, then, you know, inevitably we tend to revert back to, you know, a dialogue of how things are, whatever, whatnot. So walking on your own can often, not always, but often bring um, a, a deeper experience because of course we're never on our own. And if we're on our own, then we're meeting other people. And the wonderful thing is we're meeting people without history. We can't make a judgment. I walk, I suddenly fell a big tall fella called Tom and he's walking there and I don't know who he is. He, you know, he's got an American accent so I can assume maybe he's an American or whatever, whatnot. But I don't know where he's from. So I'm open. How would I make a judgment? Unless I don't like tall people or people with American accents, which would be ridiculous. So um, I, I think that, you know, uh, we, we're more likely to meet ourselves 
and we're more likely to meet other people um, if we're on if we if we set out on our own. Um, but as I said uh, to, to Sandy earlier, you know, it can be a, a really deep practice to walk with somebody who's walking with a completely different intention as yours. But I, I'm not sure I'm ready for that for myself. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that was a amazing answer, John. How about Kathy, a good friend, Kathy, who's been to several of our uh, American pilgrim gatherings and uh, author and so forth. Kathy, your question. Hey, John, <clears throat> this is so fabulous. I love the conversation. Um, my question is, um, what are the potent ingredients of the Camino that support this self-discovery that you're talking about? And um, like you're saying, without judging anybody's choices or decisions, I'm just curious what you think about pre-planning a Camino and booking ahead and um, things like that. Do you think that they get in the way at all of for somebody who really wants to have an experience of this self-discovery? Now, again, we need, you know, I, we need to be very, very careful of making a, a judgment about anybody's Camino and how they do it and how they go about it. Um, and don't forget, a Camino often, you know, you, you do one and then you do another and maybe you do it differently so because you've got insights from the first one and so on and so forth. But yes, I think, I think it's certainly in my experience, I found, you know, the more I've gone trusting that there'll be a bed at the end of the day, the more I've gone... Um, you know, really falling into the Camino experience and meeting the people I meet or whatever or whatnot, then it, it has always tended to be a much deeper experience for me. Um, but I mentioned the illnesses I, that I had um, uh, the last couple of years, some, you know, real, real challenges um, on, a, on a physical front uh, to the extent that, you know, I had to bring various things with me. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, my body at that stage, I'd lost something like three, I was I had no flesh on me. I mean, I was, I was really headed off in a, in a very poor state. And my daughter said, look, Dad, why don't you, um, why don't you use one of, you, 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 you mentioned these people with uh, backpack carriers and so on. And I met the most wonderful man, Hazel, who runs a thing called Pilbeo, and he was the most delightful, oh my heavens gracious me, um, it was just delightful having that aspect, and I'm not sure, so sure. So I had a, you know, a, a reasonable day pack, um, because I, in case I didn't get to where I was, I had to have certain medicines with me or whatever or whatnot. But um, uh, did it change my experience? No, I, I, I don't. I, I, I um, y y on one level it did, but then you know, I'm 75. I was, you know, ill and recovering, um, so it was. Um, uh, you know, it, it wasn't quite as sort of uh, juicy or as intense as my first Camino when I was 49, going with that competitive guy that I mentioned to you. I mean, that way it was different because I was sleeping in abandoned houses uh, because there weren't, you know, there were no albergues, there were hardly any albergues then, you know, we're sleeping in church porches. Um, it was, you know, 25 years ago plus, it was a very different experience. Um, to find even a place that you could get food or water or a shower. Um, so they were really intense experiences, but much more conducive to a 40 year old and a 75 year old. And when I let go of my judgments, um, and I did have judgments, um, and I didn't know I had, I thought I'd given them up. And I think I mentioned it before, and I'm not sure on this forum, but um, I found myself walking up behind a, a, um, a young girl, a 20 year old girl, uh, with a day pack, a very light day pack. And I, she obviously felt I was making a judgment of her. And I had to admit that to myself afterwards that maybe I had, although I, it wasn't conscious. And she said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm only taking a, a backpack, she said. And, and um, you know, it, it, there was just something she said out of the blue. She said, I, um, I've always wanted the wall to Camino, but I have a spinal condition. And I was told by my doctors that I could never walk the Camino. It was just a no-no. And this year they decided that because of these uh, companies that offer backpack transfers, that if I 
took one of those and only did, you know, five or six, you know, because you know, places, were, this was Camino Frances I, I talked about in this case. Um, uh, she said, I could do it. And she said, it's just, it's transforming my life. And the tears were falling down her cheeks. And I said to my mother, oh my God, I will never ever hold a judgment about the reason why somebody should walk or be with a day back or not a day back or take a taxi or a bus or whatever or what not. No, no, we, none of us have the right to judge another. Um, but does it, does it change the experience? Yes, of course, uh, it, it will change the experience. Um, that's only natural. Um, um, Instead, I just mentioned something there. If I could jump in, uh, we've got maybe a quarter of an hour left or something. Uh, just to mention something that I, 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 I like to flag, okay, you know, when I can. People have said to me, oh, you know, they don't want, they're not going to walk the Camino again. It's become too busy. Well, and that's a very sad thing. And it also shows a great misunderstanding. There are 78,000 officially waymarked Caminos to Santiago. And if you want to walk through Saria, you'll walk with 200,000 other pilgrims every year. However, if you want to walk the Camino in Vienna and you want to start in Monforte de Lemos, you will, something like 100, go through that part. Orense will have 2,000 people starting from there. So. Uh, we, when we talk about the Caminos, most of us are talking about the Camino Frances, and I really encourage anybody who's walked the Camino Frances and is thinking of doing another Camino, really look at doing one of the other Caminos. You know, it's, it's a whole fresh idea. You you spread the your your inner and outer glow and finances around a, a larger body of of, of, of roots. Um, uh, so do do a little research before heading off. There are there are many, many, many ways to the, to Santiago, um, and the Camino Frances is just one of them. So, John, I'm I'm going to share a secret with you. I hope nobody else hears this. Okay, John, um, that on the Camino, when people pull out your guidebook and they're finding uh, the places at all of the different stages that you recommend that they might be filled, they say, you know, a way to get around John's guidebook is to not stay at the stages he says, but stay at the places in between, get off stage and stay there. Um, are you okay with that? Oh, absolutely. I'm at pains to say to people that when, you know, I, I make the maps myself because I'm a surveyor. Um, um, and I, I, you know, most people who walk the Caminos are not hikers per se, you know, they're people who are on some sort of a journey, so they're not used to maps. So they it, they find it very user friendly and it's only got relevant stuff, you know, whether it's a coffee shop or a albergue or some water or whatever or whatnot. Now, um, so, uh, but I could, you could know, you have to start on a page and end a page, you, you have to do it. You, you can't, you ca the page has to stop at the top and start at the bottom or vice versa. So there has to be a beginning and end to every page. And I'm at pains to, to, to everybody to say, look, absolutely you must find your own pace. Uh, you know, the, the stages are all done to around about 25K a day, which is sort of, a, sort of an average. Most people seem to do that after, a, uh, you know, a week or so of walking, and that's tend to be what, you know, the vast majority of people will do. So that's what the maps are geared for. But yes, but absolutely find the places in between and go and spread your, uh, your pilgrim dollar there as well. Absolutely. Uh, you must start, stop and start where you feel it appropriate. Um, so I've never advocated uh, that the, you know, that the end stage, which I have, it just, it happens to be the and also to some extent it's there's no point in having an end stage where there's no accommodation <laughs> that, that wouldn't serve people either so it tends to be you know places where you know accommodation there's a, a choice of accommodation but absolutely people must find the places in between and um and i i know people who say who always do that they, they will always stop in the in the middle sections fine I'm great. That's the way it should be. Then I, I see in chat, uh, there's a Phyllis that said that uh, you, it was great that you quoted Thomas Merton because today is the anniversary of Thomas Merton's death. 
and uh, they were they were very impressed with that. And somebody was asking how to find that quote from Thomas Merton. And I would imagine you just uh, uh, put in Thomas Merton and uh, talk about the journey of life. And I bet you'll find what, it. You'll find what can we gain by traveling to the moon if we are not able to cross the abyss that separates us from ourselves? Type that in, or just what can we gain by traveling to the moon? Thomas Merton, it'll come up. And uh, speaking of Phyllis, Phyllis, you have your hand up. You have a question for John, please. You can unmute yourself, Phyllis. Okay, if uh, there, there you are, Phyllis, ask, there you I'm go. So, I'm so sorry. Um, I just wanted to say, John, thank you again in person. I don't know if you recall back in April, the uh, American Peregrina that was heading out with her grandsons and missing pages in the guidebook due to a printing error. <laughs> and uh, you, were, yeah. you were so gracious to, to correct that so quickly and so, just it was okay. it was a lovely experience to to reach okay. out to you and get that response. So I wanted to thank you again. And we had a wonderful Camino. We did the Portuguese this time. Um, I had done the Camino Frances by myself in 2018, but I took two grandsons, 14 and 18, this time. And I gave wow. them, I gave them those that page from the guidebook where you reflect prior to leaving. Um, because of what I learned in the four years since the first one and, and people's comments about mismatched walking partners or, you know, difficulties. And they, ref they reflected on that, even at their young age. And both of them are eager to go back. Both of them are eager to go back. So I just want to thank you for that inspiration that is always in your guidebooks. And... Uh, it is what, what, which what road did you do in Portugal, the coast or the central route? We did a little bit of both. We left um, and walked out to Foz, uh, and then we walked up a little bit further, and then we crossed into the central. And okay. un unfortunately, my younger grandson, he also suffered with shin splints by the time we hit uh, Tui because we walked the next morning after a wonderful getting to know you at uh, Fernandez on, on the Camino. We met a lovely uh, father and son from Ireland and they yes. chose to walk with the dad who walked much quicker than I and much quicker than the grandson from Ireland. So he developed shin splints yes. and uh, it, we had to turn it into a different Camino. And we accepted yeah. that. We took trains and buses to our next destination. Uh, we got to know those towns and um, it was a lovely journey and, and we'll go back and start in Tui again and, <laughs> and finish next time. But your, your inspiration in your guidebooks is appreciated by millions. So thank you and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Lovely. Let's go to uh, MJ who has her hand up asking a question. MJ. Uh, Mr. Riley, I was just saying my husband this morning, oh God, I'm going to just cry. Like that you have been, um, a person that I feel so close to because I started doing Caminos about 12 years ago. I've done one or two or three pretty much every year since then. And it's had, had some really profound effects on me. And um, boy, I had a question in here. <laughs> now that I got emotional, I'm not sure that I can re recall it. But um, I just so profoundly agree with so many things you said that I just try and go and find out, uh, try and go by myself almost all the time, figure out what the Camino, sometimes the Camino teaches me something completely different than what I was expecting about, you know, accepting someone who I didn't think I liked at all when I first came upon them. And then somehow the Camino puts me back in touch with them over and over again. Um, and anyway, your book, this is back in the day, I had no cell phone, no watch. I I would just curl up in bed at the end of the day and think, well, what's tomorrow going to hold? I better look at this book and see what there is. So I just want to thank you for uh, being my constant companion on many of my Caminos. Yes. And I can't remember my question, so I'll leave it at that. 
Well, I think, John, you talked about that we have to ask ourselves those questions. And that's one of the things the Camino does is that we ask ourselves questions. And you, you're such an inspiration with that. I'm going to take just one moment, John, to just um, make a request of everyone um, that is watching this connected to the American Pilgrims. If you're not a, connected to the American Pilgrims, I'll, I'll give the little disclaimer that I am on the board of directors for the American Pilgrims and chairman of membership. So uh, with that disclaimer, I ask that uh, today might be an excellent day, uh, December 10th, to show yeah. your support for the Camino uh, and the American Pilgrims. Uh, as last year, $78,000 went to help the infrastructure. Uh, your $50 membership in American Pilgrims, if you did that today by going to AmericanPilgrims.org, you will make a difference in the lives of pilgrims that go off to Spain. You'll help the infrastructure. You'll help support the gatherings that we do, that we're gonna do in Lake Tahoe, uh, that we uh, do with our chapters, 60 chapters across the United States. Uh, you'll help the uh, La Concha uh, newsletter, the Facebook page, uh, so many of the things that the American pilgrims help support. And, uh, and, and events like this. So that's my commercial uh, for this morning. With that, please go to AmericanPilgrims.org and click on Join Us. Uh, and I, I hope to see all of you on, on the Camino. But uh, let's just go to uh, Beth, who has a, her hand raised and a question. Okay. Oh, what a what an honor to hear you speak today. Um, I'm going to be moved to tears, too. but. Um, I've walked two Caminos um, and this, the uh, both the Francais, the second time I volunteered, what an amazing experience that was. Um, it was amazingly moving and uh, something I will cherish for every, forever. I also had the same reaction when I walked my first Camino. It's like, wow, this is life. This is really life. It's, it's beautiful, it's ugly, it's happy, it's sad, it's hot and cold, it's uncomfortable, it's so many things. And I was like, this is, this is it. But I, my question to you is, is, how do you feel about, I never tore my, my um, book up, but how do you feel about people tearing your book up to, to save um, <laughs> weight in their pack? Um, it was, um, it's, I think it's probably the only book that people customarily tear up. <clears throat> if, if you, on the first or second page, I, I, I suggest it. Um, I even put a little um, scissors to suggest, you know, you can cut down and, yes. I mean, partly because, I mean, you know, a couple of ounces isn't going to make a huge difference, but it's more the idea that, you know, um, you know, to really reflect on what we're carrying that we don't need. Yes. Um, you know, when an, when something's gone, it's gone. You know, just be present for the day that's there. We don't need yesterday's uh, uh, reflections or whatever. I mean, that's, uh, you know, some people do. But I'm a great believer in, um, and we started this discussion off about letting things go. We can't, nothing new can come into our lives if we're hanging on to the old. So um, I'm all for discarding, tearing up, burning, um, uh, ritually having a ritual burning of, of, of John Briley's first <laughs> five days so that <laughs> they're out of my life or whatever. No, I, I, I joke, but no, but there's our, our lessons there. I think one of the very powerful lessons of the pilgrimage is really what, how little we need in this life. You know, we surround ourselves with stuff uh, that we really, really don't need. And it can be a very beautiful lesson on the Camino that we tend not to get, um, oh, I, you know, when, when I use this backpacking company for the first time, um, or, or um, you know, it, it, I found myself taking things that, you know, when I got home, well, I never, I never used that or whatever or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So if you're carrying your own stuff, um, every ounce is important and we need to reflect mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and also carrying that into life because I mean you know the planet just is choking with all the stuff that we have and we we, 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 we need to learn to let go um, and to use uh, the physical letting go of books or whatever or whatnot 
as a, a metaphor for the greater letting go of old judgments and um, outmoded belief systems and so on. If we if we're to um, find a new way of living and a new life and a new approach and a new consciousness, we have to let go of the old. That's maybe a fitting place to stop. John, John, if you were going to write a book in 2023, <laughs> it would be a guidebook to living the Camino deeply. Just a person, not a guide, a guidebook <clears throat> for life. Yes. And if you wrote that in 2023, what would be some of the sentences in your first paragraph of that book? Well, the title would probably be Bringing the Camino Home. I like that idea. So bringing the insights that we have, bringing, bringing them home. And I think um, the clear indications would be use this time when we're away, when we're, you know, taking ourselves out of the familiar environment of our own work life and so on and so forth, to really let go. You know, there's that lovely expression, let go, let God. And, it, you know, if God is something that, you know, a term, a word we don't like, we'll think of something else. But essentially what it's saying is let go the old to allow the new to come in. Um, so a big theme in bringing the Camino home would be letting go. Very good. So it's... Uh... 12 noon Eastern time here, nine o'clock on the Pacific and, and in England, it's um, what, five o'clock in the afternoon? That's it. So you're, you're, you're missing your tea maybe. In, I, in I, yes, yes. I, I've got an empty cup here, which I had an hour ago and I'm rather looking forward to another cup now. I bet you are, John. <laughs> um, John, you've been an inspiration. Uh, to everyone that's that's joined us here, and this will be archived uh, on the American Pilgrims YouTube um, channel, and uh, so people will watch it. I know that last year's uh, inspiration from you was watched by thousands of people, and uh, it is it is my hope and prayer that you will be watched by thousands of people this year. Uh, but you have have inspired many thousands of people on the Camino and their life journeys. Uh, for that, we're very grateful and thankful. Uh, we admire you and appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, uh, no matter what your, 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 your faith or beliefs, um, I just wanted to give a silent moment, John, for us all to pray for you or wish you well. Uh, in, in your uh, Camino journey of life uh, and appreciation and admiration for all you've done uh, for us. So just a moment here of silence, please. John, I so sincerely hope that you feel that love from the American pilgrims. It was uh, palpable. Very beautiful. Thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, and uh, so, John, uh, for those uh, that are that are tuned in right now, and John, if you want to join us too in in uh, at uh, in one hour uh, at one o'clock Eastern time, we'll have uh, another John. Uh, Johnny Walker Santiago be joining us, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, he's also an author and inspirational Camino pilgrim. Uh, and uh, Lee Brennan will be joining us, and uh, they're both going to be uh, on Zoom from Spain, uh, the the, the uh, where the Camino is. And and uh, so we encourage you to find that link and join us in one hour, less than an hour now. Uh, on the Zoom channel. And then this evening, which would be pretty early your time, John, it'd be in the middle of the night there for you, but uh, Dan Mullins from Australia will join us at, at 8 p.m. Uh, this evening, Eastern time, uh, 5 p.m. California time, and I'll have to figure out that would be one o'clock in the morning in England, uh, so it'd be past tea time there for you. Uh, I but know, Dan, I stayed with Dan in Sydney, uh, 
when I did a tour of the America of the Australian Association. So uh, I, I know him and love him, and uh, but I doubt if I'll be up at one o'clock in the morning listening to him. But I might see him the, if it's on uh, archive. I can listen to him and what he says. Very good. So thank you, John, and look forward to seeing uh, everyone come back in about an hour. Uh, again, uh, it's just we're so so pleased and so very honored to have you uh, today on our Camino broadcast. So with that, we say when Camino and thank you for the inspiration, John. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you all.